Christmas, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome, everybody. Today, I'm looking at the NECA Gremlins Christmas Carol Winter Scene 2-Pack, released in 2019. And these kooky creatures were first seen in the 1984 film Gremlins. Now, for this 2019 Christmas special, I really wanted to do something different and sort of move out of my safe zone, which is Star Wars miniatures. I looked at all the different franchises I really hold close to my heart, and some of those franchises are Predator, Aliens, Terminator, Robocop, Bill and Ted, Critters, but one film franchise that always sticks with me, and you know has followed me ever since I first saw it as a kid, is the Gremlins films. Now even though Gremlins 2 is awesome, I do think my heart goes with Gremlins 1. It had a weird trifecta that probably normally would never work in a film, but it worked here. It was one part comedy, one part horror, and one part Christmas movie. That's right, Christmas movie. Gizmo, the original Mugwai, was going to be a Christmas gift. It had trees, lights, gingerbread men, Christmas carols, snow, and even a Santa. It had everything that was in a Christmas movie, and the fact that a lot of people don't like talking about that blows my mind, because that is funny and awesome. So when I heard that NECA was going to release some Christmas Gremlins figures, I got so excited, I had to have them. Many people don't know, I do own almost every single Gremlin NECA has ever made, especially from the first film. I love these things so much, and they mean a lot to me. They look amazing and come with some great accessories. So for the size of these guys, we're looking at a tad over 6 inches tall, depending on how you pose the legs. So everybody should know how my videos go, but now we're going to take a quick look at the mold, articulation, paint, accessories, compare them to some other pieces, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. So let's kick this video off looking at the mold. Like in all my videos, we'll go over all the major sections of the item, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see those fine details. Now I was lucky enough to be able to pop the head off of this gremlin, so I removed the red scarf so we could have a nice look at the body's detail. And speaking of the body, we had the gremlin's head, ears, jaw, which can open, pretty nice, neck, main body, arms, and legs. Typical gremlin anatomy. Now the novelty of having something like this is the fact that, for me personally, when I see monster movies, it's never enough. And I understand why they do that in film. For example, in Alien... You see quick glimpses of the creature, and at the end you see it full scale, everything's there. But, you know, it's very fast, so if you blink you miss it type deal. But to have a collectible that's highly detailed, that is an exact replica, so to speak, of the creature in the film. To me that's awesome, because I could see all the hidden details on here. For example, on the back of the gremlin, check this out. What is it? Is it a tail? I have no clue, but it has some nice armor coming down here, and then right down there, you have about eight horns, and to me that's a little creepy, it reminds me of a spider's mouth or something, and I don't like spiders, but that is pretty interesting, so it just adds a little more mystery for me anyway, but nice stuff, full of detail, so now let's get a closer look and see what this collectible has to offer. And now for a close-up look, we'll begin looking at the gremlin's head, which is my favorite part on the figure. Nicely done from the brow to the nose to the bottom of the chin. In my opinion, it is almost exactly like I remember it, if not a spinning image of what I've seen in the film. And the detailing here is amazing. Just look at all that detailing. Fantastic. And you can see how the nose protrudes out with the chin beautifully done now the mouth is on a hinge so you can open that and see all the teeth the throat the tongue and it looks amazing nicely done and beautifully painted excellent stuff and if you close the mouth it actually closes very well pretty nice now for the ears you can see how they're nicely detailed beautifully done this whole figure is beautiful I don't know what other word to say. Now, I know it's a horrible looking creature, but to me, I admire the craft and what goes into making these films. And to me, this is art. I like it very much. Now, for the top of the head, we can see the brow. 
with all the spines, more detailing, and check this out. It actually has a tiny mohawk of spines going down the head. Pretty sick. For the back of the head, more detailing, nice skin texture going down the neck, and then we have the ears. Look at all that work. The sculpt on here is just brilliant. Fantastic stuff. It really is. Now for the back, like I mentioned before, we have some nice texture on the skin. Coming down, there's some little spines coming down here. It's a little hard to see. You can see right next to my thumb how it comes out, sort of like a fish. And that goes all the way down to the back section. Look at this. I have no clue what this is, but I love it. It looks very cool, like uh, thick armor or plating. Then we have this creepy section down here. Oh, but you can see all the spines on here. Just crazy looking. And then we have gremlin butt back there. Pretty interesting. Now coming back to the front. We have the front of the neck under the chin, which looks good. It's a fantastic job. Beautifully detailed, too. You can see all the little, uh, I don't know if I would call it scales, but all the little pieces here. Just a fantastically done piece. Coming down, we have our midsection looking good as well. And then for the sides, again, beautifully done. Look at all the folds in the skin. Just amazing. And now moving on to the shoulder. We can see some beautiful detail in here. Sort of like armor. Pretty cool. And then coming down, we can see how the skin has all these cracks in it. Pretty interesting. The back of the arm. Sort of has those uh, spines, sort of like the back. And just all the detailing on there. Fantastic. Now opening up the arms, we can see the interior. Again, beautifully done. Lots of hidden detailing. Just a beautiful piece. And then we have our wrist with the gremlin's hand. Which I always love the gremlin's hands. The three elongated fingers. Just very interesting, and of course we have our claws, but the amount of detail, my god. NECA always surprises me with the amount of detail they put in their work. Now moving on, let's take a look at the legs. And now looking at the legs, the molding on each leg and each arm is almost identical. Sure there is little differences here and there as you can see with the plating on the front, but for the most part the design is the same. So in the front, we have our armored section, which looks really nice, really detailed. Nothing is flat. As you can see, there is a slight overhang on each of these pieces. Then we have the thigh section. Looking pretty cool. I love the detailing on here. Just fantastically done. Now for the interior of the leg, you can see all that. We have our copyright crap there. Amazing stuff. Now these joints are a little stiff. There we go. But you can see all the detailing on here. Then we have a little claw back there. Let me turn this around. Pretty cool. And then in the front, we do have more armored section on the foot. Let me turn that better for you guys. There we go. Beautifully detailed. Again, you can see a little overhang there. Very nice. And that's the same for this side. There's not really any differences, like I mentioned. The mold might be slightly off, but for the most part, it's the same. Pretty sick. And give me the inside for you guys. Again, beautifully done. Now, and finally, we have our feet, which I love the gremlin's feet, too. I don't know why I like the feet and uh, fingers of the gremlin so much. Just very simplistic, but beautifully executed. 
We can see the three toes with the giant claws. All the armor in the front, all the wrinkles in the skin. Just fantastic. Then we have the bottom of the foot, which does have a peg port and some beautiful detail in back there. Same goes for this side. Amazing stuff. In the back of the foot. The side. And that's all she wrote. So that does it for the mold of the Gremlin. Hopefully I covered everything. There is a lot to talk about. And as you can see from head to toe, this is filled with nicely sculpted details. So now let's take a look at the articulation and then the paint. And now looking at the articulation on the Gremlin, I used to collect NECA back in the day with their earliest Predators and Aliens and Terminator figures. And the joke about it years ago was that their joints are horrible and they snap. And I myself dealt with that. You know, sometimes the figures break. It is what it is. And their company has gotten a lot better with it. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had as many issues as I had back in the day. But there's still that fear that if I turn it a certain way, it's going to break. So if, when I go over the articulation with this, I'm going to try and show as much as I can. But if it is very stiff, I'm not going to bend it. I don't want to break it. I love these things too much. So let's get moving. For the head, we have ball hinges for the ears. So they can rotate back, forward, go up and down. They are hindered by the mold. But you can still get some nice posability out of them. For the face, we have the jaw here which can open. Nice hinge there. Then we have a ball joint right here at the head. And another ball joint right here below. So you can get some nice bendability out of there. And the face can rotate. Which is very nice. I think that came out great. Now for the arms, we do have ball hinges. So they can go all the way up like so. And also, spin all the way around. For the elbow, could bend. Nice. Pretty cool. And that can also rotate all the way around. For the wrist, can bend about that far in. Don't think it could bend. Yeah, it can't bend the other way. And then this can rotate like so. So very nice. And this side is the same. Now coming down, we have a ball joint for the midsection. And that can go back and forward and spin all the way around. Now I think we have ball joints right here at the hips. So they can go about that wide, up and down. Uh, it's really stiff so I'm not going to push it. Especially in these joints, which we have uh, ball hinges for this joint right here at the knee. And this one back here. Now besides, yeah, see that's stiff. I'm not even going to press that. But they can spin all the way around as well as bend like so. And then we have ball joints for the ankles. So the feet can rotate, spin all the way around and all that good stuff. So that's pretty neat. Definitely a lot of posability with these as long as the joints hold up. Pretty awesome. And now looking at the paint on the Gremlin, each Gremlin in the set features the same amount of colors, which is about 12. And now I'm going to rattle off all the colors that are on this baby, not including the scarf. And then we'll get a nice close-up look to see my favorite parts on here. So the colors that I've seen are dark green, brown, tannish yellow, dark tan, glossy black, light tan, maroon, yellow, red orange, black, grayish brown, and a nice gloss, which you can see on the eyes. Pretty sick. So now, let's get a close-up shot of some of my favorite parts on here. First up, we have the face, which I think is beautifully done. Sure, the pupil on this eye might be a little too spread apart. But on the whole, I think they did a great job. I love the orange, red, orange, and black with the gloss for the eyes. The tan and brown, the little horns painted in. Fantastic. And then you see the top there, beautifully done. Now if you look in the mouth, you can see all the tan teeth, the maroon and the yellow inside, looking good. The tongue, excellent stuff. I think that came out great. Now, continuing on, one of my other favorite parts 
is the back of the ears. And you can see how nicely done they are. Looking very cool. Moving on, we have his shoulders, which look very nice. I love the paint blend in here. Excellent. And that's the same on this side. Beautifully done. And then, of course, you have his chest. I love that paint. Looking good. And then we have his hands. And I like the glossy black for the nails. Fantastic stuff. And I think it's best done on his feet, which look amazing. And then finally, the next part that stands out, as odd as it sounds, is the back section here of the Gremlin, which we never really get to see in the film much. And this just stands out. We have these armor scales, which are beautifully painted. And then it has like these horns down here. Really weird. Reminds me of a spider. Oh, damn, I hate spiders. But very interesting. So that's all the major paint for the figure itself. Let's go over the scarfs and then we'll be moving on. For the first scarf, we have black, gray, and white. Looking very nice. I think they painted that exquisitely. Beautiful stuff. Turning it around. You can see the paint continues all the way around. Nicely done and even on the interior. Nice. With the second gremlin, we have a dark maroon and a red. And the scarf, I think this one might be my favorite. Looks fantastic. You can see all the wrinkles and folds. But I love the paint choices here. Beautifully done, even on the interior. And then coming down the back section. Very nice. Cool paint job. So now, let's take a look at the accessories. And now looking at the accessories, first up is the blue hat for the first gremlin, which comes in at about one and three quarter inches long. And it looks very nice. You can see all the finely detailed stitching and stuff like that. Very nice. I like the front of the hat as well. All the beautiful folds. We have the interior where the gremlin's head would go, and you can see the little ports where the ears come out of. It's pretty funny. And we have the back. Beautifully detailed. So let's see how this bad boy goes on the gremlin's head. Now putting on the hat. It's a little tricky because you got to get the little lips here around the eyes. But once it's in, you can see how the ears go into those canals in the hat. And it looks pretty cool. Nice. Up next, we have the Gremlin's red and white hat, which comes in at about three and a half inches in length. And I had to adjust the light so we could see the fake stitching on here. A magnificent job. You can see all the detailing and folds. Beautiful. We have the little pom-pom there, which is nicely detailed. Turning it around. Just a fantastic job. And I love the paint. Sure, it's a little messy here and there, but... All in all, it's pretty awesome, and the folds here look amazing. And as you can see, the ears would come out the sides here, just like the blue hat. So let's put this on the gremlin's head and see how it fits. And now putting that hat on the gremlin, the same as the blue, make sure it goes around the eyes so it stays on a little tight. You can see how the ears go in those little ports there. And all in all, it looks great. Next up, we have the Gingerbread Man, which comes in a tad over two inches in height, and it's painted with yellow, brown, red, and a very dark green. All in all, a very nice addition, and I have to say, even though it's just a fake cookie, it's nicely detailed. You can see all the little nooks and crannies of the cookie. Looking good, the little lip around the cookie, the hair is done, the icing's detailed. Pretty cool, and on the back... You can see all little nooks and crannies of that cookie as well. Moving on, we have our candy cane, which comes in at about 2 inches in height. And for its paint, it's red and white. And there's nothing really to say it's a candy cane. Pretty cool. The paint's a little off. But for the most part, pretty nicely done. And finally, we get two books filled with sheet music. Now, they are identical, so we'll just take a look at one. We can see on the outside, it's a nice blue, 
with some fake dirt painted on from wear and tear. That's the same as the front and the back. Then when we open this, we have some nice sheet music. Very nicely done, very detailed. And these do fit in the Gremlin's hands. It's a little tricky to get them, so let's take a quick look at that. To get the Gremlin to hold the sheet music, this is what I do. I'm sure you could do other things like thumbtack or something like that. But I get the hands into this configuration. And then I'm going to take this, wedge it in between those fingers like so. And then take this and place it like that. And as you can see, he holds it pretty good. And that does it for all the accessories. So now let's compare this to some other pieces. And now for a quick size comparison with the NECA Gremlins Christmas Carol version. First on the left hand side we have the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch wedge. And then finally on the right hand side we have the Marvel Legends Wolverine. And for an added bonus size comparison, on the right hand side we have the NECA Ultimate Stripe figure. Very nice, you can see the sculpt in the face looks very different as it should. Stripe had a nice unique look in the film to make him stand out from the other gremlins. And I guess technically, after Stripe went into the pool at the YMCA and started to uh, breed, if you want to put it that way, or multiply, this bad boy came from Stripe, so I guess we have father and son, if you want to put it that way. All in all, some pretty awesome figures here. And that does it today for my review of the NECA Gremlins Christmas Carol Winter Scene 2-Pack, released in 2019. I have to say, I'm normally very impressed with NECA's amount of quality and her paint detail, and this is no exception. For the mold, we've seen it before with other 1984 Gremlins figures, but the fact that they added scarves and other accessories really adds a lot of character to these figures and makes them stand out in the collection. For the paint, from what we saw from the main bodies all the way to the accessories, sometimes it could be a little messy here and there, but on the whole, they really did an excellent job, especially on the faces of the Gremlins and their bodies in general. I love the way the colors blend together and the color scheme really looks like it did in the film and I'm very happy to have these. For the articulation, it's stiff, but it is there. And if you loosen up those joints and take your time, you can really get these in some beautiful poses. As you can see here, I got one eating a <laughs> gingerbread man. Really great stuff. Now, if I had to critique these, I would say they are very top heavy and they do like to bend over and fall. So uh, I do recommend picking up some NECA stands or some other stands you might prefer just so they're not falling on you. So that's everything I have to say about these holiday gremlins today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out my video. And from me to all of you at home, my subscribers and viewers, have yourself a very Merry Christmas. And I hope you all have a Happy New Year as well. Have fun, be safe, and be merry. So I hope to see you all next time. Bye, everybody.